How to Terraform Venus While NASA, Elon Musk, Virgin Galactic, and other giants are planning to dominate Mars with their astonishing announcements, a private American aerospace manufacturer called Rocket Labs is planning to dominate one of the hottest inhabitable planets and our closest neighbor, Venus, by 2023. Let's find out in this video whether or not Venus has higher possibility than Mars for human civilization. We will also find out about some amazing scientific techniques to terraform Venus and make it possible to allow humans to live on the shiny planet and why NASA is planning to launch two space missions from 2028 to 2030 to dominate Venus. Please like and subscribe to our channel Insight and press that bell icon so that you stay updated. Let's begin. Although Venus is called Earth's identical twin, but if you dig deeper, you will find the extreme level of differences with our neighboring planet which is orbiting second from the Sun. Venus is covered with yellowish clouds which are full of sulfuric acid which have the capacity to trap heat and creates a greenhouse effect on the entire planet. This greenhouse effect makes Venus the hottest planet in our entire solar system that reaches a normal atmospheric temperature of 465 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to melt down lead. And if you compare this with Mercury, which is closest to the Sun, it has 430 degrees Celsius as the average temperature. As compared to big mountains of Earth, the surface of Venus consists of heavily crushed mountains and thousands of massive volcanoes spread across the planet. Many scientists believe that some of those volcanoes are still active. If you walk on the surface of Venus, the atmospheric pressure existing on Venus is 90 times more than that of the Earth, which could feel like being 5,280 feet below the surface of the ocean on Earth. The sun on Venus rises in the west and sets in the east, which is the exact opposite of Earth. But in terms of the distance between the Earth and Venus, it is shorter than Mars. It is 108 million kilometers, as compared to 372 million kilometers with Mars. Due to the very slow rotation of Venus on the axis of the solar system, one day on Venus would feel like 243 days on Earth. But as Venus orbits the Sun faster than Earth, one year on Venus takes only 225 Earth-like days. What surprised the scientists the most is the young surface of Venus, which is only around 150 million years old, which forced the scientists to think about what actually happened that made Venus show itself out of nowhere. And the thick permanent clouds of Venus are packed with dangerous and toxic sulfuric acid that roams around the planet at the height of 45 to 70 kilometers from the surface. Let's try to look at the difference between the features of Venus and Mars to identify more possibilities of life on Venus. Both the planets are similar to Earth. Venus is closer to Earth and the distance of Mars from Earth is three times that of Venus. Both are visible to the human eye from Earth. Venus is known as the identical twin of the Earth, whereas Mars is half the size of Earth. Due to its habitable nature, Mars is the most studied planet till now, thanks to the number of Mars exploration missions sent by NASA. Whereas very few space missions were launched to explore the possibility of life on Venus. Mars has two moons, which are called Phobos and Deimos, whereas Venus has no moon. Let's look at some of the ways through which we can terraform Venus. 1. Biological Method In 1961, one of the well-known American astronomers, Carl Sagan, introduced a unique biological idea to terraform Venus. As the thick level of carbon dioxide is the biggest obstacle in Venus for human civilization to survive, Carl Sagan proposed using genetically engineered algae to turn carbon dioxide into organic elements. But the theory was rejected because organic elements need hydrogen to turn carbon dioxide into organic nature. But due to heavy solar wind present in Venus, 90% of the hydrogen content is lost. Two. Artificial Mountains As the temperature of Venus is too hot for us to survive, another smart approach has been proposed that focuses on building artificial mountains with the help of advanced robots that should be bigger than 50 kilometers height, where the atmosphere of Venus is suitable for humans to survive. 
And by building small cities on top of those artificial mountains, we can carry the future of human civilization on Venus. But the problem is, you might feel stuck at one place. And if you plan for a vacation or for a road trip at the bottom of the mountain, then chances are pretty high that you will not survive. 3. Heat Pipes According to British scientist Paul Birch, to further reduce the temperature of Venus, heat pipes could be installed on the surface of the planet that will focus on transferring deadly heat to the colder region, which is above the atmospheric level of the plant. This in return will create a massive cooling effect by removing excess heat from the planet, and thus survival of the human civilization could begin. 4. Floating Cities Another unique approach to cool down the atmosphere of Venus could be understood by the idea proposed by a well-known American aerospace engineer called Jeffrey A. Landis. According to him, if we could build enough floating cities around Venus, then we can provide a shade to the entire Venus, and in the end we can cool down its level of atmosphere so that human civilization could easily survive. But that means we have to live in the floating cities forever. Although Venus has a harsh environment, there is something mysterious about this shiny planet, sparkling in the sky that has been referred to by ancient humans again and again. Let's go back in time. As the movement of Venus is not fixed and is closer to the Sun, it hides itself for many days and suddenly shows up in a different place. This made many ancient cultures believe that Venus is not a single star but actually are two stars appearing bright in different areas. One comes in the morning and the other shows up in the evening. But how is it possible that the people who existed during Jemdet Nazar period, between 3100 to 2900 BC, were aware of the fact that the two stars that appear during morning and evening are not two but one star in entirety? The evidence of this fact baffled the archaeologists when they found it in a cylinder seal that belonged to this period. Similar evidence was also found in the Venus tablet of a Misa Duca that belonged to the first Babylonian dynasty. The people of the old Babylonian period used to call Venus Ninisiana and Dilbat. Ninisiana means Divine Lady Illumination of Heaven, which was made in reference to Venus as the brightest visible star. In the Chinese historical culture, the morning appearance of Venus was named the Great White, and the evening Venus was named the Excellent West One. Even ancient Romans knew Venus as a single star, but they preferred calling the morning appearance of Venus Lucifer, which means Light Bringer, and evening appearance as Vesper. It was in the 17th century when an Italian physicist called Galileo found that Venus shows phases like the Moon. He further explained that Venus tends to shine brighter when it is closer to the Sun from its axis, and shines less when it is farthest from the Sun. Then in 1761, a Russian polymath named Mikhail Lomonosov managed to discover the atmosphere of Venus, and in 1790, a German astronomer named Johann managed to observe the atmosphere of Venus. And because of its bright aura in the sky, Venus has inspired many ancient writers and singers. Surprisingly, in two of the most important and oldest literature works of Greek history, Venus was called the most beautiful star in the sky by Homer, who was the author of the Iliad and the Odyssey. Exploration Efforts In 1961, the Soviet Union launched a robotic space exploration mission called Venera-1 which was directed towards Venus but lost contact on the way. And on the 14th of December 1962, the United States made history with its Mariner 2 mission, which managed to pass through 34,833 kilometers above the surface of Venus by gathering crucial data of its atmosphere. In 1974, the United States Mariner 10 mission on its way towards Mercury took several high-resolution shots of the Venus clouds, which showed extremely high wind speed in its atmosphere. And in 1974, Soviet Venera 9 and 10 landers managed to grab the first image of the surface of Venus in black and white color. Currently, Japan's probe called Akatsuki is in the orbit around Venus since December 7, 2015. And as of June 2021, 
three new missions to explore Venus has been announced as follows. On the 2nd of June 2021, NASA has announced that it has selected two new missions to Venus in pursuance of their Discovery Program, which is planned to launch between 2028 to 2030. And on June 10, 2021, ESA, the European Space Agency, announced the use of Envision to conduct a detailed study of the surface of Venus. Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck announced to launch its private mission to Venus by 2023, which is much earlier than NASA, and their objective is to discover the signs of life in the clouds of Venus. Many scientists believe that life on Venus exists 50 kilometers above the level of its surface in its atmosphere, which has the same composition as that of Earth, and Rocket Labs is planning to hit this atmosphere to discover opportunities for life. Although Mars is more explored than Venus, but as Rocket Labs is planning to conduct private missions on Venus, this can create a new era of exploration, as well as the race between private companies to explore Venus. Not to forget, Jeff Bezos also has plans for launching floating habitable cities into space, which we believe could help in creating possibilities for humans living in the habitable atmosphere of Venus. It is also surprising to notice that the reference to Venus was made in ancient times, which gives us enough motivation to explore this mysterious planet. And if SpaceX, NASA, Rocket Labs and other big companies show their interest in exploring the habitable possibility in Venus by adopting unique terraforming techniques, then that day is not too far when humans can actually be seen dominating Venus with their extraordinary missions. Which technique do you think is most suitable to terraform Venus? Do you think humans should plan to dominate Venus in the future? Tell us in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel Insight. See you in the next video.